Privyet, tovarish. Yeah, okay, that's silly. But it's Russian for hi there, comrades, or comrade, because uh, I'm going to talk about socialism in its uh, interesting forms. Okay, that's a little bit silly. So where am I going with this? Well, I'm going to America. A UCLA professor really thinks they need to question the ideal of home ownership because why the hell would you want to own a home can anyone explain that no one should be able to own a home that just doesn't make any sense especially not with our current climate control mumbo jumbo it's it's, it's weird but trust me this is indeed what she is saying and i can't for the life of me understand people like that but i guess that's me what do i mean well let me show you this is a ucla professor kian go i assume i pronounced it right if not feel free to lambast me she is a professor at urban planning and she recently made her views i'm going to read it her views on how to solve climate change public in an op-ed titled suggesting the need to rethink home ownership now the one thing that every capitalist society kind of needs is a large base of people owning their own property why because it creates a responsibility the one thing that every socialist and communistic state won't have is a large group of people owning their own property why because it takes away the chance for the government to control their responsibility because if you have your own house you know that you need to do certain things but at the same time you also have a safety to fall back on now if you don't own a house that means other people can control where you live now that's a scary thought but this is simply the truth this is why in most western countries it's hard to buy a house but at the same time it's cheaper to buy than to rent and now people will tell you no it's not cheaper to buy than to rent because you have to do your own well fixing and painting and all that yeah that's true you do but even then it's cheaper to buy than to rent downside of buying is if a media structs your house then you don't have a house anymore which is also true if you rent by the way but then it's not your financial deposit i guess but in all fairness meteors tend not to strike houses that often so eh, it's eh, okay hyperbolic i know but it's still in the long run more prudent to own than to rent anyway sidetracked no no this here professor is going to tell us that it's a good idea not to own a house uh, professor Kian Gao, assistant professor of urban planning at UCLA, whose expertise includes urban ecological design, spatial politics and social mobilization in the issue of climate change and global urbanization, argued in an op-ed, The Nation for the Nation, uh, what makes that California forest fire even worse is urban planning. Yeah, you know, the thing with the forest fires and we saw this in California um, half a year ago. And we're seeing this in Australia at this point in time. It's not urban planning that creates forest fires. It's um, cleaning the area. Now, for example, in Australia and in California, they have a back burner program. So to, to burn an area around civilization so to speak to prevent fires from coming to those civilized areas but both in california and in australia environmentalists have argued against it and whilst failing to argue against it they basically stopped it from happening which is all good and well but if we look back through history and i i kind of like history that's a thing of mine we know that as far back as time goes people building houses near forests cleared the forest of underbrush 
Why? Because in case of a forest fire, underbrush is fuel. Trees tend not to burn that easily. Once they burn, they burn pretty, pretty, pretty bright, so to speak. But it starts with the underbrush. Whether it's dry or not, funny enough, not that big of a deal. Because I've seen fires start in wet straw from within. For oh, fuck's sake. That's a completely different story, though. Never mind that. Um, but yeah, do you want to do something about forest fires? Clear the underbrush. Do the back burner thing. Obviously, they don't want that. What they do, however, do, and this is something that's painfully obvious when we look at Australia, they start forest fires. Most forest fires in Australia are actually lit by humans. Never mind that. Let's keep blaming the ecology. It's climate change, don't you know? Now, Goa compared the two ideas of thought, the American tradition of private property ownership, which is very important to make people responsible for their life, or the collective property theory, which basically says no one is responsible and everyone can use it. Now, in England, they had the um, conundrum of the common lands. So there was a piece of land, everyone could graze their cattle there, but you try not to overgraze, because if you overgraze, the land will die, blah, blah, blah. But if you let everyone use it freely, then boom, overgrazing happens, there's a problem, land dead. You cannot collectivize responsibility. Now, there are always people who will tell you, yeah, but people will do the right thing. Wait, no, they won't. One or two people might, but a group of people simply will not do the right thing. So if you want to have a basically society that is interested in its wealth and safety and prosperity, you want homeowners. Because they care about their environment and their region more than people who just rent. It's the difference between, um, well, locusts and, I don't know, what, what insect starts its own uh, area? Locusts just go from place to place and they eat everything and once it's gone, they move onward. This is what happens when you make people irresponsible of their surrounding. Oh, you don't have to care about that. You can just rent. And if that place goes down, well, you probably find another place. Whereas homeowners tend to feel more connected to where they are. Oh, this place is a mess. Let's organize a cleanup. Funny enough, if we look in America now, we see a lot of cleanups being organized. By whom? By people who want to help other people, not by the people of the community itself. But once other people organize it, the people of the community will step in and will contribute to it. But it's not the renters that organize this. Anyway, I'm not quite sure how not owning a house has anything to do with not keeping the forest safe. Because that's what we're basically talking about. Well, there's too many cities, there's too much urban planning close to forests and therefore forest fires. Yeah, but no. Urban planning, fair enough. Safe area, problem solved. No, no, we don't want you to clean the, 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 the underbrush. We don't want you to collect rainwater. Now, I haven't for sure checked whether that is true in uh, Australia, but it sure as hell is in the UK. Uh, sorry, the USA. How weird does it get? We don't want you to collect rainwater, which is something you can use to stop forest fires. We don't want you to clear underbrushes, which is something you do to prevent forest fires. And we don't want you to have a house close to a forest. Okay. So then what? Everyone live on a boat on the sea? Ah, they'll probably find something wrong with that soon enough. But yeah, no, okay. So the ideas of the American dream. Oh, here we go. Sorry, I'm going to. Uh, come on, there you go. I'm going to activate it a little bit. The ideals of the American dream that have instilled for 150 years 
will be difficult to dispel. Those deals have blinded us to other possibilities. We need other kinds of escape routes away from our ideology of ownership and property and towards a more collective, healthy and just cities. And anyone who believes that you really, really, really need to bang your head against the wall and then go to a library and find a book and read. Because um, there hasn't been an example throughout history where collective ownership actually worked. And trust me, if you want to start a commune with a group of people, you can. So you can create an area of land and live there with collective ownership and collective responsibility. You know the thing, the thing Bernie Sanders used to be part of when they kicked him out because he was a lazy git. Because that's the downside when we're talking about collective. A collective is as strong as its weakest link. Whereas individual responsibility is as strong as the individual being responsible. Now, if you have your own house and you're irresponsible, yeah, you might have a problem with your house. But if you're responsible, you can fix those problems. If you're part of a community and people don't feel as inclined to help others out because that's what always happens your property dwindles now i wish i could say that there are examples of how this is failing um, i could for example point you toward poland or russia or the ukraine uh, but that's all old, old news because let's be honest the last 20 30 years They've been pretty much capitalistic. They still have social programs, but they're not socialism. So I could point to other places like Cuba, where they still have a pretty strong communistic socialistic drive and people drive cars that are ancient and have old decrepit houses. It, it, it looks nice. People think it's romantic. And in a way, maybe it is, but they don't do it by choice. Their, 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 their societies are, well, I think de decrepit is a good word. And it's not saying anything about the people who live in Cuba. I mean, the Cubans are perfectly good people. But if you have a society that goes against human nature, eventually it will collapse. And it, I know people will tell me, yeah, but Cuba isn't rich. And because of Americans, um, what's it called? Trade embargoes. Yeah, you know could be true but then we look at Venezuela which was one of the richest countries in the world not so long ago and now it's one of the poorest countries in the world or what about Zimbabwe now Zimbabwe has another problem it's not just socialism it's also um, well black supremacy I can't call it white supremacy because the guys are black but it's ethnic supremacy they don't have to be black and white call it ethnic supremacy because that's what it is and ethnic supremacy will be your downfall if you're not going to yet let people handle things that are best at it. So what they did in Zimbabwe, they pushed away people who were best at farming food. Yeah. And what's the result? Well, they, they collectivized it. Uh-huh. And now they're starving. Hmm. So when people were responsible, they were flourishing. And when they collectivized it, it crashed. Must be something else to it, of course. But here's the worst part. I mean, okay, related video students think they know the Green New Deal, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to go back to a face, and then I'm going to go to the next face. Because Professor Kin Go is also someone who is a co-founder of a super interesting a multidisciplinary architecture and strategic uh, consulting agency practice sorry not agency a practice located in Brooklyn and let you tell so no let me tell you this I am 100% sure hands down this is not something they do for free now why would that make a difference well do you really think that people who own nothing will pay them for doing anything. 
No, no. These people get paid either by governments or no one. Whereas uh, if they were an architectural strategic consulting practices that were rented in or hired out, or how do you call it, by people who own property, then those people who own property rent them, hire them to, to increase their value. So at one point she's talking, no, no, we need to stop private property. And at the other point, it seems that private property is the main driving factor for her, hmm, well, obviously not her income because she now is a professor at UCLA. Okay, can I show you something of that super interesting? Now, my Adobe Flash Player isn't working because everyone has advised me not to because crap can come in with it. Fair enough. This is their website. Okay, it looks cheap. I know. I didn't make it. But... Super interesting is a multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary, my English is crap tonight, architecture and strategic consulting practice formed in 204 in the Dumbo waterfront area of Brooklyn. And I really think the name is a con coincidence. Our work spans institutional, educational, residential and commercial spheres. Funny how that goes. So let's go away from home ownership but still be commercial oh. see this is the thing with people like this it's always do as we say don't do as we do we are committed to a social political and environmental responsibility our objective throughout our work is to search out highlight and give form to the narrative of activism action and participation in the everyday lives of our individual clients and the community in which we work. Work kind of denotes that they are getting paid. Who pays them? Well, doesn't really matter. Now, I'm not going to read the last... Oh, sorry. Now, I'm not going to read the last bit. The super interesting is certified. I'm not going to read that. You can do that. It's always nice to see that they have to fill it with buzzwords to show you how woke they are. But, um, yeah, these people, they, they, they have the best of intentions. Surely, no, no. They don't want to harm you. They don't want to harm your society. They simply don't care about your society. Because trust you me, if she has the money to own property, I guess she's not living in community service country uh, buildings. She'll probably have her own house if she can afford it. See, that's the thing. And, and I like it, for example, that in America, one of the main propagandists, eh, one of the main spokespersons for socialism is Bernie Sanders. Dude has four houses. Trust you me, if they can afford to do live on their own and own their own property, they bloody well will. But they'll tell you not to do it. And then they make money off of you whilst you do what they say. Welcome to the world of socialistic woke. Anyway, Tovarish, that's it for me for today. Like, share and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I'm curious uh, about your criticism. Where do you feel I'm right? Where do you feel I'm wrong? Interaction is always appreciated. I do have to ask you this though. Please help me grow. Uh, like, share and subscribe and share. And if you have nothing else to do, then um, share. <laughs> I know begging is not my thing, but it's fun to try. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for coming and I hope to see you all next time. And please remember, criticism is more. Then welcome.